this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this boxed bead stitch. So similar to the bead stitch which I already have on my channel, I'll leave a link um, just here so that you can go and check that out. But the difference is it kind of takes away the gaps which are in between. So if you want a more dense stitch, this is perfect. This is what it looks like from the front. Um, it's really nice, it kind of almost looks like a basket kind of weave stitch and then this is what it looks like on the back. So for this tutorial you will need your selected yarn. I'm using Paintbox Simply DK today. This calls for a four millimeter hook but I'm just going up slightly and using a four and a half millimeter hook. So check your yarn band to see which um, size hook it recommends. Then you will need a pair of scissors and a darning needle to sew in your ends. So before we get started, if you are new to my channel and like my tutorials, make sure that you subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest ones. And if you're already subscribed, don't forget to click that notification bell to be notified of when my new videos go live. As always, I will leave links in the description box below, so take a look underneath this video for more details of where to get these supplies and also to the corresponding blog post. You want to begin by creating your slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook and you are wanting to chain in multiples of three. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And you want to repeat that until you get to your desired width for your project. So go ahead, pause the video, chain in multiples of three and meet me back in just a moment. So now I have chained my um, chain for my sample piece, I've done 21. We're going to add one more um, just to help with the pattern, repeat. And then I'm going to add one more for the foundation chain. So it's multiples of three plus two. So for row one, what we're going to do is one double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So remember, we are talking in UK terms. In the US, this is known as single crochet. So we don't count the chain that's on the hook and we count back one, two, three. Go ahead and insert your hook into that chain. Grab the yarn, pull it through. You'll have two loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. We're then going to go ahead and do another double crochet into the next chain. And then into the next chain, we're going to do an extended double crochet. So what we do here is we begin as normal. So insert the hook into the next chain, grab the yarn and pull it through. But here what we do is grab the yarn and pull it through the first chain and then yarn over and pull through both chains and that just makes that double crochet a little bit longer but still shorter than a UK treble which is US double. So we now want to go across to the next chain and do a double crochet so one and then into the next one two and then into the third one do an extended double crochet so I'll show you that again insert the hook grab the yarn and pull it through, yarn over and pull through one loop and yarn over and pull through both loops. You're going to repeat that all the way along. So two double crochets, one, two, and then an extended double crochet. Insert, grab the yarn, pull through, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Repeat that all the way along until you get to the end. So pause the video, I'll leave the instructions on the screen and meet me back once you have finished. So I've just come to the end of my row one and if you've done it correctly you should finish with one of those extended double crochets. So now we're going to move on to row two and we're going to chain two and turn. We're going to do a treble crochet into the first double crochet stitch from the first row. So not into the bottom of this stitch, I'm going to go into this double crochet. So remember I'm talking in UK terms, so a treble in the UK is known as a double in the US. So wrap your yarn around the hook, go into that stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through. You'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. 
We're then going to do our slanted cluster stitch and the way that we do this is yarn over, wrap your hook around this treble that we've just done. So from front to back, grab the yarn and pull it through. You want to be fairly loose with your tension here and you might want to twist your work onto the side. It might make it easier for you. Grab the yarn again, around that treble again, yarn over and pull through. Don't be too tight on your tension. And then once more, grab the yarn around the treble, yarn over and pull through. And then you have all of your stitches on there. Grab the yarn, twist your hook downwards because it will make it easier for getting through and pull through all of those loops. And there you have your slanted cluster. Now we need to anchor this down and what we're going to do is we're going to skip the next double crochet which is just here and we're going to work into that extended double crochet from the previous row and we're going to do another extended double crochet. So we go straight into that stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through and then grab the yarn and pull through one loop on the hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. So what that does, it just kind of bridges the gap so that it's a fuller stitch um, and that's why they call it the box bead stitch as with the bead stitch, sometimes it can look like it has gaps in between. So now we're going to go ahead and do a treble crochet into the next stitch, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. You can turn the work on the side again if you wish because we're going to do our slanting cluster. So yarn over, around that treble, yarn over, pull through, pull up on the tension a little, yarn over, around the treble, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, around the treble, yarn over, pull through. Grab the yarn and pull through all of those loops on the hook. We're going to skip the next double crochet and do a extended double crochet into the extended double from the previous row. So insert the hook, grab the yarn, pull it through, yarn over and pull through the first loop and then yarn over and pull through the next loop. And you're simply going to repeat that all the way along. So treble into the next stitch, And then do your slanting cluster, so yarn over, around the treble, yarn over, pull through, once more, and then last time. Grab the yarn and pull through all of those stitches. Skip the double crochet and then do an extended double into the extended double from the previous row. Insert the hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first loop, and then yarn over, pull through both loops. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way all the way along, and meet me back once you are at the end of your row. So I've just come to the end of this row, and I'm about to do my last stitch, and I just wanted to point out to you where you're going to do this stitch in case you're struggling. Because sometimes when there's a chain at the end, it just gets a bit confusing. So we're going to finish with the extended double crochet. And if you remember, after we've done this slanted cluster, we skip the next stitch, which is this one here, which actually does look like the end stitch. Um, and then we go into the next stitch over. So it might be that you just have to adjust your stitches slightly and pull it out a little bit um, in order to get into that very last stitch and it does look like it's on the side. So go ahead, insert the hook and then do your extended double. It's really important that you go into the right one because otherwise your edges will be wonky. You kind of get a, a little bit sticking out just here. So that is your row two. We're now ready to move on to row three. So we're going to chain two, one, two, and turn the work. And we're going to do one double crochet into this slanted cluster. So insert your hook into the top of that stitch, do your double crochet, and then we're going to do a double crochet into the next stitch, 
And then you want to do your extended double crochet into the next stitch. Now it almost looks like you're doing it into the chain space here. Just make sure that you're not being too slack with your tension at this point um, because otherwise it can make it look a little bit unstable. But once you start adding to your rows it kind of works itself out. So we're going to repeat the same as what we did for row one. So double crochet, double crochet, extended double crochet. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way all the way along and meet me back once you've got to the end of your row. So I'm just at the end of the row here, I've just done a double crochet into the top of the slanted uh, cluster, I've done another double crochet into the next stitch and then I'm going to do the extended double crochet into the top of the stitch from the last row. Again, make sure you're going into the right one so that you're keeping your edges nice and straight. Then what we want to do is chain two, turn our work, and we're going to repeat row two and three over and over again from here on out. So rewind the video if you need to, to remind yourself of this row here, this slanted cluster row. I'll leave markers on the screen so it's easier for you to find but what I'm going to do now is build this so that you can start to see what it will look like. Okay so I've just now built a few more rows of this stitch. I'm just going to yarn over and cut off the yarn. So I finished on a row two just to finish off that edge and you just do the row two as normal. But I really like the look of this, it almost kind of looks like a basket kind of stitch. Um, but it's really nice and dense which is what I like about it. In terms of being a yarn eater, you know it's going to use up more yarn than what a granny square would obviously because it is a denser stitch. But I think it's really nice and it's actually quite easy once you get into the swing of it. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.